Hey everybody, it's Peter and this is the Kawasaki Ninja 650 and in this video we're going to discuss if you should buy the 2023 that's sitting in showrooms right now or the 2024 that's coming to showrooms very soon. Now first of all, I'm filming here at Jim Gilbert's Power Sports, also Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals. This is Canada's huggable car dealer. They're also the number one volume Kawasaki dealer in the country so they will treat you well and the best part is they also give me complete access to the entire Kawasaki lineup so if you want to know more about this bike we're going to go through that right now and I've got a number of videos on it if you want to know more about the 2024 which isn't quite here yet but we will discuss it in detail in this video I will also be filming that when it arrives so the question for you becomes is this the right bike for you and then if it is is the 2024 the right model or is the 2023 the right model so that's what we're going to cover in detail in this video. Make sure if you have questions that I don't get to in this video, you let me know in the comments below, especially if you have questions about the 2024, and make sure you subscribe because I'll come back to those questions both in the comment section and in future videos. All right, let's get going with this review. So let's start by clarifying what the Ninja 650 is and what's different in the 2024 versus this model here. Well, here's the funny thing. The 2024 is gonna be announced as a new model. They're gonna have lots of new, new, new everywhere. But the reality is this has the same wheelbase. This has the same suspension travel. This has the same weight down to the pound. The reality is what's new in the 2024 is essentially bodywork. It's still based on the same frame. It's still got the same engine, transmission, package. It's even got the same dash. It's mostly the same. And when it comes here, we'll point out a few minor differences here and there, but you're basically getting the exact same bike. And I think that's a good thing. So you have to decide, do you want to spend a little bit more for the styling? Because it will cost a little bit more in 2024 than it does in 2023. And you have to decide, is that going to be worth waiting for or should you pick up something like this today and enjoy it today? Now, if you want to see what it looks like as of time of filming, the new 2024 Ninja 650 is on the American Kawasaki site, but it's not yet on the Canadian Kawasaki site. So you can go to that uh, .com site versus the .ca site to see the differences between the two. But really what we're talking about is bodywork. So now that we know that the bodywork is the only difference. Let's talk about what this bike is We'll hint on who it's for, and then we're gonna go into some of the details that the other videos aren't showing you. So first of all, the 650 engine in this bike is used on every class of bike that Kawasaki sells, from the retro Z650 RS to the standard Z650, or the naked bike, to this bike, to the Versus 650, which is more of a touring bike that's a little upright, a little taller. It's even used in a cruiser in the Vulcan S. So you can get this engine in just about everything, and every one of those other marketing materials for those bikes, they call it the Ninja 650 engine. So sometimes there's a little bit different tuning in there, but it's very minor. The reality is this is a good sport bike and this engine is what I've described as one of the best street sport engines out there. So if you're going to the track, the new ZX6R is coming out for 2024. That's gonna be an amazing bike. The current ZX6R is already out and you can look at that as well. But the reason this is getting that body update is to match that ZX6R look. So there'll be a new look but not a new bike. Now let's start digging into some of the details that make this bike pretty great. So if you're looking at a motorcycle, the best thing to do is to start by looking at the front wheel. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but you can tell the intent of this bike or any bike by looking at the front wheel. So the first thing you have here is a pretty decent tire here. This is the Dunlop Road Sport 2. That's a pretty competitive tire, a little stickier than some of the other tires in the class and stickier than some of the other tires that are on the, uh, the similar class within the Kawasaki lineup. The other thing you have is these pedal style rotors and there's dual rotors here. So pedal style is something they're moving away away from a little bit in the newer uh, bikes. Uh, they used to have this supposedly for cooling. The reality is it's just a pretty cool style, but you've got lots of cooling in here, very powerful brakes for what this bike is and the types of riding that you're gonna be doing. And of course the dual discs is a step up from the Ninja 400. The Ninja 400 has a single disc. So dual discs here, you can see the ABS logo right there. There's an ABS ring that you probably can't see on the far side there. So you do have front and rear ABS on this bike. And then the standard uh, right side up forks. The other thing that's kind of cool is just the general style even though this is going to be um, the dated styling in a little bit, it still looks pretty cool. You've got the signal lights built right into the bodywork there, so no signal stocks to look to hang off the side there. So to me, even though this is being updated, it's still a very modern look with modern sport bike sizes. So again, if you're taking this to the track and you want to upgrade those tires in the future,
future. You can, it's got standard sizing on the tires. And also just above the shot that you're looking at, you do have LED lights. Let's just take a quick look at the front end of this now. So one of the things you're gonna see prominently displayed on the 2024 model is twin LED headlights. You actually already have those on the 2023 here. Now what uh, Kawasaki used to do is stick a headlight on one side and a high beam on the other. What you have here is headlight and high beam on both sides all together. So you have that clean modern look. And the other thing is the nice white LED lights, that's a closer color to daylight. So when you're driving at night, that color allows you to identify between that raccoon and that rock on the side of the road. Uh, because your brain can see it in the colors used to seeing it in. So the white LED lights not only look cool, they're great for safety. They have that nice sharp cutoff, they're modern lights, and they look very good. And again, they work very well. So again, high beams and low beams all on both units looks really sharp. So we talked about style with this bike. Let's talk about comfort as well because it's actually a really strong point with the Ninja 650. So I'm about six feet tall and you can see it is easily flat footable for someone like myself. So even if you're much shorter than me, you won't have any issues. I have a nice comfortable knee bend and both feet are flat on the ground. So it's got a fairly low seat height, which is beginner friendly, but it's also just comfortable for experienced riders. The other thing that people don't realize is the Ninja 650, because it's not a super sport bike, the clip-ons don't take you way down here. You're actually fairly upright. The seating position is very similar to the Z650, even though the handlebar design is different. We'll take a look at that in just a second here. So first thing you have is your foot pegs are in the same spot, whether you get the Z650 or the Ninja 650. They're just the same body position. You've got a nice sort of tuck in here. The aerodynamic bodywork does give you a little bit of wind protection around your legs there. So on a cooler day, you have some protection, but of course you can get air to your body easily. And again, you can see in the seating position here, if I sit forward where the tank is, I'm very upright and I could tour on this. I could ride all day, no problem. The other nice thing with the Ninja 650 is you do have a little bit of wind protection here, which is gonna take some of that uh, air off your chest. Leaves clean air around your helmet, which is nice for no buffeting, but it does take some pressure off, especially at highway speeds and beyond, to have a little bit less pressure on your chest. What that means is it's a very comfortable bike. Now, if you wanna take it to the track, you can tuck back to the seat here, and I'm expecting the seat on the 2024 to be the same. It looks the same to me. I bet you the seating position is the same because the frame is the same. So once you tuck back a little bit, you can really tuck in, you can get your head behind that windscreen. And because the mirrors are mounted out front on the fairing and not back here on the handlebars like they would be on the Z650, when you're in that tuck position, your mirrors are still in front of you and they give you a good view behind you. If you had them on the handlebars, like on the Z650, when you get in the tuck position, you can't use your mirrors anymore. So you can get into the tuck position, you can use your mirrors. And the other thing I like is they're a little bit more ahead of you, so they're a little bit more in your peripheral vision. You don't have to turn your head to mirrors that are up here. They're out front and you've got them there. And they are very good mirrors. They're nicely mounted up front, nice and wide. They clear everything. You don't really have any issues with seeing around yourself. So seating position, Comfort is the real key here. It also has a little bit larger rear seat than some other 650s or 600 class or that kind of thing, uh, certainly even within the Kawasaki lineup. So you have a little bit more space back here than some bikes. But again, the Versus 650 is gonna be the best 650 in the Kawasaki lineup for a rear seat there. And don't forget about the uh, Z650 RS, which has a whole different style, style seat. And that's also a comfortable bike with the same engine as this, same tires, that kind of thing. So overall, comfort is a big piece of it, but you still have performance. So when you talk about performance, we have to talk about the engine, which we kind of did. Like I said, this is one of the perfect street sport engines. Six-speed transmission, good torque in the mid-range, revs right up through the higher range, very, very good. But there's also the difference in performance in a the way a bike handles. And the 650 does some cool things here. First of all, just from a style perspective, you've got this cool swing arm where the exhaust would normally come and hide on an other bike or competitive bikes. What they do down here is because you have your catalytic converter and everything down low on this bike, there's no actual need to have a muffler up high. What that does is it keeps the bike narrow and it keeps all the weight centralized and low. Even the rear suspension design, the horizontal back leg suspension design, it comes up here and comes into there. So some of those heavier pieces that normally sit further back on a bike or carry out to the side and further back, they're all tucked underneath. And what that means is this bike is very good at handling. It feels light, feels lighter than it is, and it's very, very maneuverable. So you've got good street performance, you've got good handling as well, and that makes it more enjoyable to ride. So officially, I have not seen the 2024 rear light setup, but I will say on the 2023 model here, 
For 2023, Kawasaki didn't always put the LED signal lights onto all of their bikes, including some higher end bikes than this, but you do have that on the Z650. So as we turn the bike on here, you can sort of see that tail light come alive there. You can hit the brake there. You've got a pretty cool shaped uh, light there. And then you also have your signals, which include a four-way flasher. So you don't just have the individual signals, you have four-way flashers, good for safety. Style is here, safety is there. It all looks really good. And again, when you're moving to 2024, you're not gonna get anything newer than this. It's not like you have incandescent signal lights or anything like that. You've got all the features right here in the 2023 model. Next thing I wanna talk about is a TFT display. Now I could have maneuvered this bike to artificially give you a better view of the screen, but I wanna show you how good this screen is. It's a fairly bright, even though it's an overcast day, it's a very bright overcast, kind of makes me squint outside. And you can see that I've got a lot of reflection in there, as well as a lot of light in there on the TFT display. But remember, a camera can't see things as well as your eyes can. My eyes can quickly adjust. I can tell you right now that even the camera can see through that glare clearly and what you have here is a pretty good display this tft display works very well so a couple things that you get with the benefit of a tft that you won't get in regular gauges the tachometer here revs to about 10,000 rpm red line but in that setting you can set it to whatever you want to start flashing at you to warn you that you're approaching red line so when you get the bike it's going to be at around 4,000 rpm it's just going to warn you for the break-in hey you know stay around that 4,000 rpm line and the owner's manual gives instructions of how far and how many miles you can do how many kilometers you can do on that break in mile so again camera's not filming it as well but all of this is super clear to my actual eyes you can see up top we've got ktrc so that is kawasaki's traction control you're not going to see any difference in this in 2024 from the 2023 model and you can see right now it's set to two so i can set it to two i can set it to one and i can set it to off what that does is gives you some traction control i generally would ride around on this bike with level one I've driven the Versus 650 for many years. My bike was a 2016 model. It didn't have traction control. It's not something you need, but it's nice to have it there if you want. And again, driving around with level one, you really don't have any interference of it. Level two is what I would use more for the rain uh, mode, so it's like a rain mode for you. So you've got, uh, when it gets uh, a little slippery outside, you can avoid having those issues with the rain. And then you have as well a uh, trip meter there. So it says trip A, hopefully you can see that. Yeah, you can see that. Uh, trip B, and then you have odometer right there. And then on the other side, you have right down on the bottom here, it says your range. We can cycle through those as well. Average speed. So range was uh, distance to empty, uh, which is calculated based on how you have been driving. There's your average speed. There's your total time. There's your battery. There's your kilometers per liter, which you can do liters per hundred kilometers. You can do miles per gallon, all kinds of different things there. And then there's the average kilometers per liter, which again, liters per hundred kilometers, miles per gallon. So you have instant and average fuel efficiency, and then you're back at your range. So the clock on the far right, 1009 right now, is always there. Speedometer is always there. The gear position indicator on the top left is always there. It is green uh, when it is neutral. And of course, every other gear is indicated in white. There's a six speed transmission. And then you can also invert the colors here. So I like to have it in this black color, uh, which would be more of a night mode. But if you wanted a little more clarity in the daylight, you could set the black to white and the white to black. And that also gives you the option to have a little bit more clarity. So very good display, very good information, and also very easy to read, even in this high glare environment, even for a camera. So again, just want to clarify again, the camera can't see it nearly as clear as my eyes can, but even the camera can see it there. So that's a really uh, key piece to these displays. As we back out the camera a little bit, one key piece that you get here on the Ninja 650 that's not on the Z650 is a little spot here to put a USB port. So if you are gonna run your phone or something else or a, GS, a GPS, so I would say USB, it's probably a 12 volt uh, port uh, in there. If you're gonna run those kinds of things up here, maybe throw it in your stem here with various accessories, you have the ability to hardwire it in, to power it up uh, with a 12 volt port right there and it's mounted to your fairing. And again, the fairing gives you good wind protection as well. Now let's take a look at some of the controls. Take a look at the left side handlebar. You've got a few things going for you. I'm filming from this top angle in part so you can see this little trigger right there. So again, left side handlebar, there's your clutch lever right there. You've got this little trigger. So your high beam is locked on like that and your low beam is locked on like that. But if you want to flash your high beam, which I've used all the time just to get people's attention, to get uh, whatever you need, they call it the flash to pass kind of feature. It is available there with a the trigger, which is super handy to just grab people's attention instead of having to do this or that. You can keep your handlebars, hands where you need them and just tap that 
that uh, trigger on and off, which is super helpful. Down here, signals, of course, down here is your horn, and you have those four-way flashers there, which are easily within reach. Over here, the controls for that uh, trip odometer and the secondary display, trip odometer cycles through with this, the secondary display below, the range, the instant fuel efficiency, that kind of thing, cycles through with the bottom switch, and then there's a select switch, and the select switch is what allows you to choose your, um, uh, traction control. So that also can be used in various menu systems, which we can get to in another video, but that select switch is all, everything here is very easy to do. So you cite trip A, trip B, and odometer, and cycle through the bottom display over there. So bottom display is on the bottom thing, that's easy. And then you can select your uh, traction control right there. So really cool stuff. I am gonna look just a little bit up at the clutch lever here. Let's talk about the clutch lever because there's a few things that are unique with it. So the clutch lever has a few things that I really, really like. First of all, it is a very, very light clutch pull, and that's because it's a slipper and assist clutch. So a slipper and assist clutch does two things. First of all, as the bike is uh, decelerating, if you mess up a downshift or get really aggressive with a downshift, what the clutch can do is you can pop that clutch, and on a bike without the slipper and assist clutch, you run the risk of locking that spare, or locking that rear tire with uh, high amounts of engine braking. With the slipper and assist clutch, if you do that, if you pop that clutch and a huge down shift, a huge rev change in the downshift, uh, the clutch allows some slip on its own, which keeps your wheel in contact with the ground and helps prevent your rear wheel from sliding uh, to prevent a skid. I've done this on my Versus 650 uh, without the slipper and assist clutch that I had, the 2016 model that I had. So having that feature when you just really aggressively downshift or mess up your downshift, it help, works to help keep that rear wheel from sliding, which gives you a ton of security. So that's a big thing. Uh, that is a safety feature, but it also gives you a lighter clutch pull that you can use in and around town, makes it a lot easier. The other thing that you have that's pretty cool here is let's just set the clutch lever to number one, this is what we did. So number one is the furthest out clutch pull. And then you can set it to five different settings. You push this uh, lever out like we're doing, and I'm gonna bring it to right to number five, and that brings it much closer. So this one here, it's at my first knuckle right there. Uh, you can see if I just do that, and let's bring it back to the one and now it is uh, just beyond my second knuckle. So it was here and now it's out just past here. So that's a huge range of clutch lever um and you also have the same thing with your brake lever. So I'm gonna put it in the middle there, number three, that's kind of where I would have it. What's cool about doing that with the clutch lever is it doesn't just position it for your hands, it can change the feel of where the grab point is. It just sort of uh, makes it exactly where you want it. So not only can you adjust your brake lever and your clutch lever for where you want them, uh, it can change sort of where that grab point feels to you, which is kind of a cool feature with that piece right there. Taking a look at everything chain side here, you can see a few little things that are kind of nice. First of all, you've got the rubber pads, not just for the uh, driver, but also the passenger. Those are gonna help kill vibrations. You also have the little weights on the bottom there. I don't know if you can see them from the angle you're looking at, a little bit of a weight there, which also helps for vibration dampening. This bike's not crazy vibey anyways, but they do take care of your vibrations that way. And the passenger pegs have the same thing with the rubber pad there. The other thing that I kind of like that I think goes unnoticed is on a sport bike, you're gonna wanna do your chain maintenance. And sometimes it's easier to get a sort of a paddock stand. You have a little braze on here that you can drill in the extra stand so your, paddock, your rear stand uh, can come in, you can sort of push up that bike, get the rear wheel off the ground. So you don't put a center stand on here, you just have that stand. You can do your chain maintenance and you've already got the brazons there. So it's very easy to add on what you might wanna add on uh, if you're gonna be doing your chain maintenance uh, regularly, that kind of thing at, uh, at home. So all of it is just sort of built in, ready to be taken care of just for you, but no extra weight, no extra center stand to carry around, which limits cornering clearance and can add weight. So nice to have those little brazons there. You can get that little paddock stand to lift that up, rear wheel off the ground, do your chain maintenance. So now that we've seen the details of this bike, and we know that essentially the details are the same on the 2023 as the 2024, there's just that styling difference, let's talk about who this bike is really for. So first of all, if you are a beginner rider, I often recommend the 400, the Ninja 400. It's a little bit lighter, a little bit more compact. And the thing about the Ninja 400 is it's a super cool bike because it's so light, so flickable. It just feels like nothing else on the road. You know, it's not a great comparison, but in the automotive industry, there's something like the Mazda Miata, which is a lightweight, nimble sports car without a ton of power that is super fun to drive, and there's just nothing else like it. If you get a Ferrari, it doesn't handle like a Miata, but it puts a smile on your face. So the Ninja 400 is a similar feel to that. It's not as fast as the super sport bikes, but it gives you a feel that you just can't replicate in a larger bike. Now, this one doesn't quite have that 
as nimble kind of feel. The trade-off you get is a little bit more comfort. This is a little bit larger. On the Ninja 400 for myself, my size 11 shoes are pretty close to that exhaust that does come up the side. So this one gives you a little bit more room, a little bit better passenger capacity, and just a little bit more space overall. It also gives you a little bit less revs on the highway and a little bit more torque overall. So that makes it a different driving experience. It just feels like a more robust engine because it is. So you have something here that, like I've said for many, many years, is a very controllable, easy to drive engine, good for beginners, but it also is something that you really aren't going to grow out of. There's a gentleman here who bought his second Versus 650, which again, same engine as this, but a heavier bike. He put like 100,000 kilometers on it. He bought a second one. He's gonna do a whole bunch more. So the engine, the feel of this bike, it'll go a long, long time. It's not something you're going to, as they say, outgrow. Some people like to use that term. I don't like to use that term, but that 650 engine kind of does everything you need to do. If your friends are going to the track, you wanna go do a track day, you can do it on this. If you want good performance in town, in the city, country highways and highway, this does that for you as well. What I like about the Ninja 650 over the Z650 is a little bit extra fairing and that 12 volt port location. That gives you a little bit more versatility and some people think the Z650 is a more upright bike. It's really not that much more upright. The handle, hand position is slightly different, but to me, they are equally comfortable. It's just whether you're like this or like this is kind of the same to me. So you still sit upright on this bike, and that means you've got some light touring capabilities. Now, if you're going to be doing a lot of touring in a 650, get the Versus 650. It costs more, but it comes with the bags. It comes with a taller adjustable windshield. If that's your primary goal, get the Versus 650. But if you're gonna be doing regular riding around town, some country roads, that kind of thing, and the occasional tour, this bike will probably suit you just fine. So all you have left to decide is should you save a little money, get a 2023 that's in stock right now, or should you wait a little bit, get the 2024 with the new bodywork? Let me know what you think if you wanna wait for the 24 or if you wanna get the 2023. And if there's questions you have about this bike or anything else in the Kawasaki lineup, let me know in the comments below. Make sure you hit subscribe because we'll do all kinds of bikes like this. And uh, we'll come back to you again and again because I have complete access here at Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals, Jim Gilbert's Power Sports. So remember, if you're looking for this bike, it is sitting right here at Canada's number one volume Kawasaki dealer, also known as Canada's huggable car dealer. They will take care of you. They're an awesome dealer. They're number one for a reason. Thanks everybody for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.